Having trouble with navel orange worm in the orchard? Sidetrack, now miso mating disruption is your best bet to minimize loss and maximize profitability. Used with Tresse's new multi-gender lures for your monitoring program, you can achieve the quality yields you deserve. Contact your local sales rep today. Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Nut Producer Magazine, reporting to you here today with Bob Klein from the California Pistachio Research Board. I uh, wanted to talk specifically about a critical pest of tree nuts in California. That's navel orange worm. I know that's uh, not a pest that's probably new to anybody that uh, <laughs> grows uh, tree nuts in California. Nonetheless, it is the most critical uh, insect pest that uh, is plaguing the industry. And as we grow acreage, you know, growing our acreage and uh, of of pistachios, almonds, and even walnuts, uh, we have this this pest that's uh, just having more and more opportunities to proliferate and just have a have a good eating time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about some of the most ideal hosts? for this pest and how it interacts with you know pistachios almonds and, and even walnuts and, and some of the f tree fruit crops you know we've got what are some other posts we got we got figs and pomegranates you know. yes yeah, so, um well almonds and pistachios are the preferred really the preferred host for navel orange worm in california we that's, those are the two commodities that have the largest problem with it walnuts less so uh, figs have a significant problem, and then uh, pomegranates uh, a, a bit smaller problem. But the real problem exists in pistachios and almonds. I hesitate to say which one's more susceptible than the other, which one's a better host. Um, in pistachios, we can find a, a generation, the generation time can be as short as 500 degree days, where in almonds is 700. Does that make pistachios a better host? Uh, maybe marginally. but. Uh, but we really can't consider them separately because they both now exist in what we could call an agro ecosystem, particularly in the southern San Joaquin Valley. We have over 300,000 acres of pistachios and we have probably half a million acres or more of uh, almonds. And you don't find a place any longer where pistachios and almonds can be grown that aren't within moth flight distances from each other. Right. So the moths are moving freely between the orchards. And so it, it, overwintering sanitation is a concern for both of them because we share moths in the overwintering sense. Uh, once the, uh, they don't have much to eat early on, er, late in the season, uh, or I should say early in the season, uh, until we have whole split and non perel almonds, and then that creates a whole new food source that the moths can really love to eat. And multiply. And right. multiply. And then uh, about the time non perel harvests is when pistachios become most susceptible because of hull degradation. And so then the moths can move out of the almonds back into the pistachios and cause problems in the pistachios. And then move back out of the pistachios into the late harvesting almonds to cause additional problems in the almonds. So it's, it's the, the moths move freely between the two commodities and it really is an agro-ecosystem problem. We've done a great job at uh at making that a good environment for them to, to, to be in, right? <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we've done a wonderful job creating habitat for them. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you, you mentioned over the winter, you know, they, they primarily overwinter in almonds and pistachios, right? And how is their, um, you know, how is it comparable as far as their uh, overwintering preference? Well, uh, the, they survive better in almonds than they do in pistachios, but there's more pistachio mummies in an orchard, uh, particularly on the ground, than in, in, in an average almond orchard. Okay. So you do have a slight, the, the almonds have a slightly larger problem in that sense. Uh, if we look at the sex ratio of emergent moths, for some reason pistachios produce only about 30% females, where almonds produce 50% females, so you have greater reproductive potential out of the populations you're coming out of with uh, in almonds. But overall, this needs to be a, a unified and integrated approach, especially within the almond and pistachio industries, to, to, to collaborate and work together to, to take care of this pest. Um, you know, what, what is, I know we have different organizations, like we have the Almond Board of California, and we have American Pistachio Growers. We've got other, um, you know, okay. private entities that are that are working, and the California Pistachio Research Board. What kind of industry collaborations are going on to stop this pest? 
Well, the California Pistachio Research Board and the Almond Board work fairly closely together to fund research projects on navel orange worm. The, uh, we're both trying to, we're both involved in the new area-wide program with sterile insect technique that the federal government just put six million dollars into following uh, the years that we've been, f we've been funding it uh, across the industries. So um, we have some hope that we can come up with a, with a program that can demonstrate cooperation among a larger group of growers in addressing the problem in a large area. Right, we have some great tools involved in managing this pest, whether it's in the winter with sanitation or in the summer with, with mating disruption and pesticides, crop protection materials, and with the sterile insect technique, if we can get that rolling and um, get that available to the industry commercially, we, we stand a pretty good chance at controlling this pest. But it, it is going to take a unified approach and definitely area-wide. So what, uh, what would be your advice to growers with what's in their power at this time? Well, at this time, they can be looking at as much as they can learning how to use all the techniques that are available and finding out what works best for them. As we try to come up with an area-wide program, we're not sure of how all the legs of that program would work. And so as we, as we gain more experience in uh, using the different aspects and different areas, then we can do a better job in rolling out a program that will work well for everyone. Great. Well, thank you, Bob. Be sure to stay in tune with what's going on in the industry by reading Pacific Nut Producer Magazine, attending uh, your industry events, especially our upcoming expos for growers, uh, both in, in Fresno and in Turlock, our Tree and Vine Expo, our Grape Nut and Tree Fruit Expo, and, and like I said, other events in the area. So you, you can stay current on, on what's the best uh, management practices and what we can do to um, to control this pest. That's, that's definitely a huge threat to the industry. We need to take very seriously. So thank you for, for your insights and read more about these things in the Pacific Nut Producer Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.